Good morning to a brand new day. Time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun. Learning is good for everyone. Good morning, third grade. My name is Mrs. Nix, and I am so excited to be here with you to help support you as you become amazing thinkers, readers, and writers. Okay, maybe you can help me out. I'm sitting here trying to figure out, do I wanna read Chicken Sunday by Patricia Polacco or Pink and Say by Patricia Polacco? Hmm, Patricia Polacco, she writes some of the greatest stories around. I just can't quite decide which one I wanna read. Do you ever feel like that? Do you feel like that when you go online and you're checking out books through the county library and you don't know which book to read? Oh, it's so much fun. Or you can go on Sora and maybe check out some of those. Maybe look to see if you can find a book by Patricia Polacco. Now, here's a next challenge for you. If you read one of those books, I'd love for you to tell me about it. Send me a note send me an email and I'll make sure that I send you an activity book. There's an address right here on your screen that you can send me that note. You can tell me about, maybe you pick out a Patricia Polacco book or maybe you check out a different book. Um, maybe you just wanna tell me about something you've learned uh, with your teacher or learned from here on PBS, but I would love to send you a free activity book in the mail. Don't forget to include your home address so that I can send that to you. And it's totally free. All right, are we ready to get started today? Okay, I have three things that I want us to go through. We're gonna start out by talking about diphthongs. We're gonna talk about prefixes and then we're gonna finish up with some suffixes looking at comprehension. Okay, are you ready to start? Let's warm up those really, really smart muscles that you have. Do you know what those are called? That's right, it's your brain. Let's warm up our brains this morning by looking at those high frequency words. Now, remember, these are words you come across often. And by third grade, we should be able to not only read them, but write them and spell them correctly. So if you need to practice this a little bit, guess what? That's okay, that's what we're here to do, right? Is to practice and learn. Okay, let's go through, let's read them together. I wanna hear you big and loud, here we go. Play, please, pretty, Pull, pick, place, part, people, over, and own. Excellent. I have two of them today that we're going to practice. Now, people is probably that word that you may have even picked as a, a word that you want to practice at home. P-E-O-P-L-E. -E -E. Sometimes that O gets forgotten. Don't forget it. It's important to have it there. And then the second word is part, P-A-R-T. All right, help me out. Let's put these in some sentences. We've got two of them. How many mm are in your family? And would you like mm of my sandwich? Okay, which one goes where? How many part are in your family? That doesn't make any sense. How many people are in your family? You guys are so smart. How would you like part of my sandwich? Okay, we could totally share, right? Well, probably not right now. It wouldn't be a good thing to share too much. Okay, let's get started. Let's start with those diphthongs. Now remember, diphthongs are where you take uh, two letters together and they make a new sound. So I've got my boy card um, to remind me that we're gonna talk about that oi sound. So there's two ways we can spell oi. We can spell it O-I and O-Y. Now O-Y, Here's a clue as to when to use it. A Y is when you're at the end of a syllable. Okay, let's look at some examples here. O I, like in the middle of coins or in the middle of point. O Y is at the end of enjoy, but you're gonna see it right here. It's in the middle of employment. Did you see how we put those in syllables? Employment, all right. Let's go over and let's talk about the cow card. Now, what sound do we hear with the cow card? That's that ow sound. And we've got two different spellings. We have 
O-W and O-U. So let's look at some words that have those. We have O-W says ow, like at the end of allow, and in the middle of the word frown. Nicely done. Okay, we have O-U says ow, like in the middle of sound, and at the beginning of the word outdoors. Nicely done, outdoors. Okay, let's switch gears just a little bit and talk about prefixes. Now remember, our base word is a word that just stands alone. It has its own meaning. So we've got words like lock, honest, payment. They make sense, we can, we can visualize and think about what those words mean. Now, here's what we can do, especially in third grade, because we're really working on those multisyllabic words we can add and change the meaning of a word simply by adding a group of letters to the beginning. Now these letters that are added at the beginning, they can't stand by themselves. They're not words on their own. All right, here's an example. So we have three of them this week. Un, dis, and non. Those are our three prefixes. And they all mean the same thing. They all mean not or opposite of. Okay, so here's what I mean. So if I have the word lock and I want it to not be locked, I could add the prefix un in front of it and now I have the word unlock. So that word means the opposite of lock, right? Okay, how about honest? We know that honest is when you're telling the truth, you're being honest, right? What if you're the opposite of honest? Okay, then we could put this prefix in front of it and then we could say that you were being dishonest. Ah, that's not being very honest, right? Okay, and then our last one would be payment. So payment is when you're giving money to pay for something. Maybe you go down to the store and you buy some candy and you make a payment. Well, if you don't pay, we would say that is non-payment. You didn't pay. Okay, now we've talked about these prefixes, but I also want to remind you that there are words that actually start with these letters that are not prefixes. And I always feel like it's really important to be able to see those. So the first one I want to show you is just the word none. None. It has N-O-N, but that's not a prefix. All right, so this is kind of those non-examples. And then we talked about this one too the other day. We talked about dish. Dish has D-I-S at the beginning, but that's not a prefix because H is not a word on its own, right? Okay, and then the last one that I think is a really good one to just kind of see, how about this word uncle? So uncle has U-N, but remember C-L-E is not a word all by itself. So un doesn't, it, that's not a prefix there. That makes sense? Practice it as you're looking through and, and reading your stories with your um, adults at home and see if you can find other words that start with those same letters as the prefix. Okay, let's switch it up. Let's talk about and practice some of those diphthongs that we worked on as well as our prefixes. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sort some of those sounds and some of those spellings. So right here, we're looking to put all of the words that have the O-Y spelling, as in boy, and the ow sound, as in house, oi, as in boil, and ow, as in cow. So we're really not only paying attention to just what do we hear, but we're focusing on the spelling itself. So when we look here at this first word, read it with me, what does it say? Found. Where would we put it? It's got the owl sound, so I know it's going to be over here. But what's the spelling? You got it. It's O-U. Good. How about this one? Join. Where would we put that? We want it on the oi side, and it's got an O-I. Okay, good. This is kind of fun, right? Okay, we've got joyful with an O-Y. That's easy. We can put it right there. How about Clown with the ow sound. Clown, O-W, good. And toys with a O-Y. Do you see how we're able to do this? This is something you would be able to do at home. Loud, spelled with an O-U, good. 
How about this word? Down with an O-W. Good. And noise. Nice. It's got an O-I. And pounce with an O-U. Where do we? Oh, right there. And prowl with an O-W. And moist with an O-I. Look how fast we're getting. And enjoy with an O-Y. Look at all of those. So that's something you could do when you're at home. Now, let's look right here. We're looking for which one of these has the prefixes that we've been practicing. So disagree or dishes. Which one has the prefix? Well, we know it's not dishes, right? Because that H-E-S is not a word. So that's not it, it's disagree. And what does disagree mean? It means that you're not going to agree. Excellent. All right, let's do one more. How about uncle or unknown? You got it, unknown. And what does unknown mean? It means that we, it's not known. We don't know. Excellent. All right, let's finish up today talking about some suffixes. Now suffixes are the opposite of a prefix. They're found at the end of a word. We've got able, less, and full. Now we've been practicing them. Able means that you're able to or you can do it. Less means without. And full means that it's full of. Now we have some words right here. Successful, acceptable, fixable, moonless, and careful. Let's figure out which word can go with this sentence here to make it make sense. And then we're gonna talk about what does that word really mean. So read this with me. Life on a steamboat could be hard. It could be risky too. The captain had to be, hmm, he had to be, well, he kinda had to be successful, but I don't know if that really talks about it being hard, hmm, acceptable, fixable. I don't know if the captain could be fixable. Moonless, ah, how about careful? Do you think that the captain of a steamboat would have to be careful when it's hard? Probably so, right? So what does careful mean? Well, what's our prefix? I mean, our suffix, full. So we know it's full of. So I've got some choices here. Is it full of danger? No. How about without care? No. How about full of care? Yes. So full of care is what careful means. And that's how that suffix can help us make sense of that sentence. Excellent job. Third grade, I've had a blast hanging out with you today, this morning, as you're getting ready for school. And I just want to say thanks for being here. Thanks for practicing those diphthongs, prefixes, and suffixes. I hope you have a fantastic day. Remember, you are responsible for your learning success. So listen, ask questions, and share your ideas, because together we can do so much more. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow on PBS. Bye-bye. A brand new day, time to learn and games to play. Learning things is so much fun, learning is good for everyone.